I'm Heath Lambert, and you're listening to Marked by Grace, a podcast applying the grace of Jesus to all of life. Ever since the spring of 2020, we have witnessed a phenomenon of people who have retreated to their homes, and even though they come out to do their grocery shopping and to play golf and to have dinner with friends and all the rest, we're still dealing with hundreds of thousands, millions of Christians all over the world who have not returned to church. Now, there is a time and a place to talk about that larger phenomenon. I've actually done that on other episodes of Marked by Grace. But this week, I want to talk about the people who have not returned to church, not because they're unbelievers, not because they were only doing it because they had to before COVID, uh, but I'm talking about the people who've decided that they are going to do online church. And the question this week is, is online church real church? Is online church real church? Is that a real legitimate way to do church? And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the quick headline answer right up front, and then I'm going to spend the next few minutes explaining why I'm saying what I'm saying. So if you just want the quick and dirty answer, you could turn the podcast off in just about 20 seconds. But I hope you won't do that because I want you to hear what I have to say about this. I think I think in many ways the heart and soul of Bibl- of the biblical church is at stake in what we think about this. So is online church real? church? And the answer is no. No way. Not a chance. In fact, online church isn't even a thing. It's, it's, it's not a reality. It doesn't exist. It's like dry water or a wet desert or something like that, or a dog that is a cat. I mean, it is not It is not a real thing. Online church isn't real. It doesn't exist. If if you're a person who cares about church attendance and you're a person who's decided that what you're going to have count as your church attendance is that you attend church online, then I just want you to know that that is not a real thing. That does not count. Online church isn't real. It doesn't exist. You might be doing things online. You might be interacting online in a certain way. You might be listening to preaching or hearing music or something like that. But no, online church is not real church. And let me tell you why. Let me tell you why by pointing your attention to two passages of scripture. The first is uh, a crucial text in uh, the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25. And listen to what the Bible says. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. The text says we need each other. Uh, I need you and you need me to help us consider how to love one another and stir one another up to good works. And because that's true, we must not neglect the habit of meeting together. It's the habit of some. It says, don't, don't neglect the meeting of yourselves together as is the habit of some. So honestly, to update that into 21st century language, you could say, hey, Listen, some people are doing this fake online church thing, but don't you do that. You meet together. Church is only something that you can do together and in person. Listen, there's interactions that can happen online. You can, you can get content online, um, but the real church is always going to know that there is no uh, replacement for true biblical fellowship, for live and in-person interaction with 
preaching and with singing and with fellowship. Uh, There is no replacement for that. Uh, An online chat doesn't do it. Text messaging doesn't do it. Um, Podcasts don't do it. Uh, Church, if it is to happen at all, must happen live and in person. And if you try to do this some other way, then you are sinning. You are doing what the Bible says not to do, which is neglecting the meeting of yourselves together. Don't do it, the text says. It says you need to encourage one another. You need to be together. And it says in verse 25, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. The day is the last day of history when Jesus Christ returns with power and glory to end time and institute eternity. And that is the day. And the Bible says, as you see that day getting closer and closer, and it is getting closer and closer, as you see that happening, you need to be together more. You don't need to take your foot off the gas on this. You must be together more. You need it more today than you needed it yesterday, and you need it less today than you will need it tomorrow. Don't do this. Don't fall for a fake. There's a reason why this text is in the Bible and, and others like it. And, and one reason it's in the Bible has to do with another text, and it is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. And it says, so then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. A Christian is somebody who used to belong to the kingdom of darkness. And now they belong to the kingdom of light. And Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19 says that made you citizens of a different kingdom. Listen, you can't do citizenship online. Uh, If you are a member of a kingdom, uh, you're a member of that kingdom. Uh, If you're going to live in the United States, which is where I live, if you're going to live in the United States, you've got to actually live in the United States. You're not present online. But even more powerfully, uh, you're a member of this new kingdom and you're members of the household of God. One of the most common ways the Bible talks about church is by talking about family. We're brothers and sisters. We're part of the family of God. And you can only do family ultimately together. Now, listen, sometimes necessity forces us to be away. uh, But if you're part of a family that has to Zoom or FaceTime or something like that at the Thanksgiving, you at the Thanksgiving table, you feel the loss of that. You know we're not together, and you know that is a loss. Uh, years ago, I was doing ministry in a foreign country close to the gospel, and the only way I could talk to my family um, was through the internet for a couple of weeks, and I hated it. My goodness, I was thankful uh, for the opportunity uh, to be able to see their faces and be able to hear their voices, but I couldn't wait to get back together and give them hugs and kisses and share a meal with them. In in the same way, over the last couple of years, I have missed a lot of church because of four different brain surgeries I've had to have. And so there's been months, months over the last couple of years where I have not been able to get out of my house and come to church. And I was thankful for the gift of uh, First Baptist Church's online presence so that I could watch the services and listen to the preaching and hear the music and see some of the faces. I was very thankful for that, especially in the first couple of weeks when I didn't feel like doing anything. But ultimately, towards the end of my recovery period, if I didn't get to see my family at my church, I was going to lose my mind because I knew I needed to be with them. Listen, online church can be a gift for people who absolutely can't make it in person. Maybe you're recovering from a surgery. Uh, Maybe uh, you have an infirmity that keeps you from being able to get to live and in-person church. But when that happens, it is a loss. We're thankful for the technology that allows us to get something of what we're missing, but it doesn't make up for it. If you believe 
uh, that your online church attendance is real attendance, that's just not right. You are missing out. You are missing out on interacting with brothers and sisters. You're missing out on interacting with your preacher and your other pastors. You are missing out on contributing your voice to the sound of the singing saints. You are missing out. And so, no, online church isn't real church. Real church is a family. And if you wouldn't consider neglecting meeting together with your family, then you shouldn't consider neglecting meeting together with your church.